Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And it has finally happened. I don't, I can't remember off the top of my head how long ago we started this uh, journey to a final release or a general release, an official release of the Edge Router 3.0 firmware. If you'll remember, I was uh, doing a build your own ISP series. I've still got the equipment in the rack and we paused because I didn't want to do a setup with an old firmware when we knew that, you know, this new firmware was, was coming out and let's, let's head on over. I'm finally, I'm so glad it's actually finally released, right? So we're over here. I'll leave a link to this down below. Edge Router 3.0 is now official. Two years ago, we had Release Candidate 5. Ten months ago, we had Release Candidate 9. But now that this is official, I am going to do an upgrade video, and then we are going to finally continue down the journey of building our, our ISP. Well, let's take a look at this real quick. So, Edge Router 3.0 includes a new redesigned web interface and adds support for WireGuard VPN. And if you haven't been playing with this in beta, you can see the uh, the screenshot. i got to zoom back out for that to work. Let's see here. No, it's not popping out. But you can see it's a much, much nicer interface, right? It looks like everything else that is... Um, you know, UISP these days. So it's really, it's really nice. Um, WireGuard VPN allows you to connect edge router to edge router using site to site. It can be a server, it can be a client, and you can do this all with, with WireGuard. So down here, more improvements. Uh, of course, we had the updated web interface and a dark mode support. I know a lot of you will like that. You appreciate that I'm using dark mode here. Added support for WireGuard VPN. Configuration is possible using both the web interface and the command line interface. Some DHCP version 6 stuff. Added support for remote access to the local interface via UISP. Added a new left menu, which replaced the tab-based navigation. So before we had our, our tab at the bottom. And tabs across the top. Now they're all on the left. Added a new version of ports widget for the main header. Added system option to the theme settings. They added the CPU and hardware status to the top bar. Added temperature alerts. Improved security and reliability. That's just kind of very vague. But a lot of vendors are doing that these days. Added factory default firewall configuration. Dropping all traffic incoming from ETH1. Added file name validation for restoring configurations. Added logging of the WebSocket client IP address to allow brute force attack detection. Very important. Implemented new validation checks for passwords. Disabled SSH in the factory config. There are some uh, bug fixes here. They fixed a DHCP renewal when using a slash 32 subnet mask. Fixed some res restoration of backups, configuration backups. Fixed link to UISP application running on the UISP console. Fixed issues with the upgrade in Chrome. So um, previously we would have to use Firefox to upload a, a backup because if you did it in Chrome, um, you could have you could have some issues. So we ran, we ran into that in the field. There are some known issues. In previous firmware versions, an incorrect error may appear in Chrome, indicating that the firmware upgrade failed after the upload completed. And this is this is what I was talking about, was the upgrade of the, the firmware. So we had to switch to Firefox for that. Sometimes DPI is reporting the wrong receive and transmit counters. Offloading. So if you're on an Edge Router X, X SFP, or an Edge Point R6, L2 TP IP6 traffic is not being offloaded on those routers. And if you have an Edge Router 12, VLAN traffic is not being offloaded. I'm assuming they're working on this. I don't know if it'll take them two years to get those fixes out. But Edge Router 3 is here, so plan accordingly. Let me know if you're running this full release already. Let me know if you're running that down below. We're going to get a lot more mileage now out of our 
ISP lab and we're going to continue those videos. So I'm going to have to go back, see where I left off. I think maybe the next step, yeah, I don't know if we explained cabling. I'm going to have to go back and check all that out because I know we need to install UISP or select a UISP host. We now need to upgrade our router. We're going to have to upgrade the firmware on everything. Um, but yeah, we're going to be able to really get back to that content. If you got any questions, let me know down below. If you're using this, let me know down below if you're running into any issues. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, whether it is with Edge Router Gear, Unify, many other vendors, whether it's wired or wireless networking, voice over IP, security, storage, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com and fill out the contact form on the front page. Someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Come on over to community.willyhow.com and join the conversation about Edge Router 3.0 and all of the other technology we talk about over there. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.